Late last year, I put out a video ranking every single theme park I had been to in Europe. This came after my first trip to the continent where I spent seven weeks road tripping from Denmark to Switzerland and many countries in between. This past summer, I got to go back to Europe for a shorter two-week trip, and this was focused around visiting the parks and countries that I didn't get around to last time. My buddy Josiah and I got to experience 11 new parks each, which brings the total number of parks I've been to in Europe from 27 to 38. And that's not to mention that I've decided to exclude mountain coaster stops because they really only have one ride, and I also haven't ranked Rheinkirmes in Germany which is one of the largest fun fairs in Europe. These are all super fun, but they're not traditional amusement parks. Anyways, not only is the total number of parks I've been to in Europe far greater than it used to be, but I found that I ranked some parks too low and some parks too high on my old list. So after really thinking those over, I feel that I have a more accurate opinion this time. I did want to give an honorable mention though to Disneyland Paris and Walt Disney Studios Park, which I had planned to visit during this past trip to Europe, but since we found a cheaper alternative to visit Plopsa Land, home to my favorite roller coaster ever, I decided to choose that option instead. Aside from that, I've been to most major theme parks in the following countries. Poland, Denmark, Germany, Netherlands, Belgium, Switzerland, France, Spain, Sweden, Norway, and Finland. There's still a few others I'd love to get to, such as the UK, Italy, Turkey, Ireland, and maybe Russia if they calm themselves down. Plus, there's still a few spots in France and Finland I haven't been able to visit as well, so eventually this list will be updated once more. But for the time being, having been fortunate enough to experience 11 total countries is just absolutely incredible. I do want to say to have done that much for my age is something I'm forever going to be grateful for. Trust me, I don't take any of these experiences for granted, and a lot of it wouldn't be possible without the support of you guys. Now, like last time, to prevent this video's runtime from being too long, I will be breaking this list in half and posting the latter 19 parks to a video which will be released four days after this one. So with that all being said, let's get to it. Oh, and if you want to learn more about any of these parks, I have vlogs from all but two of the small ones. Number 38, Zatterland in Poland. This is one of two parks on this list that I do not have a vlog from, and that's because I was here for no more than 30 minutes. I ran in, rode their two little roller coasters, and that was it. Zatterland is located about a mile and a half from Poland's signature amusement park Energylandia, so I figured I'd quickly get some extra coaster credits. While that's all Zatterland is really known for in the enthusiast community, they do have this cool dinosaur walkthrough experience that I didn't even know existed until after I left. But oh well, at least I walked away having done the two things I came here for. Number 37, Connyland in Switzerland. This is the only sizable amusement park anywhere in Switzerland, and it's known for its one-of-a-kind Pax Looping Coaster Cobra. Though this ride was quite a bit more janky than I expected, I still really enjoyed it for what it was, but I have to admit, it wasn't even the highlight for me. That honor absolutely belongs to Mammoth Tree. This is probably the single best sky ride I've ever been on, because at one point there's a dark ride scene with fire and water effects, and I don't know how this happens, but the gondola literally drops a few feet. It is insane. Aside from that, nothing about this park really excites me, and I found the appearance to be quite bland. It's not a bad park by any means, none of these parks are, but Connyland was certainly one of the least memorable in my opinion. Number 36, Attracty Parks Laharen in the Netherlands. This is the second park that I didn't record a vlog for, because again, I wasn't here for very long. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if many of you didn't know that I've been here at all. But yes, I did stop by for a few rides on the park's standout coaster Gold Rush, which I thought was a lot of fun. A little overrated given the hype some people give it, but still a rock-solid Gerslauer coaster with a lot of forces. In terms of park appearance, Laharan goes for a western theme which I feel is so overused these days. I'd give them a pass if they had a small Wild West section, but the whole park being themed to something that every other park in Europe already has just didn't really do it for me, and it didn't look especially nice either. It was once again just pretty generic, I thought. But I'd still recommend checking out Gold Rush if you're in the area. You'll be in and out pretty quick. Number 35, Bon Bon Land in Denmark. The park known for its wacky themes, it's just something that all enthusiasts going to Denmark have to experience. Having said that, it is my lowest ranked park in the country by far, and that's okay, there just happens to be some tough competition. I do think Bon Bon Land is really desperate for some investment and modernization. A new coaster and updates to the park appearance could really go a long way here. As is, the ride lineup isn't half bad though. Vietzvina is a really fun ride, especially for being the first Gerslauer Eurofighter, and I enjoy their Gerslauer spinning coaster hand cotton as well. There's a couple unique flat rides and water rides here too, which kept us at the park for longer than I initially expected. Number 34, Wild on Fries at Park Klotten. I apologize for that pronunciation, my German isn't very good. But this is a hidden gem of a park. It's located right outside a town called Kokum, and the views looking on over are just absolutely spectacular. Scenery was easily one of the strong suits of this park. Their main ride complex consists of this castle with a roller coaster, a flume ride, and a dark ride built in or around it. It's more than I'd expected from a park of this size, and each of these were pretty high quality. The coaster especially was my favorite wild mouse style roller coaster I'd ever ridden. I thought its layout was super unique, and there were so many airtime moments. Otherwise, if you're a fan of those quirky self-operated rides you can only find in Europe, this park has a bunch of those too. Down to its core, I found this place to have a very relaxed atmosphere, so I definitely walked away impressed. Number 33, Bella Warde in Belgium. Even though you can tell this park is absolutely geared towards families, 
I enjoyed it quite a lot. It's one of those parks that blends animal experiences and rides together into one, and the collections of both are pretty good on their own. They have a unique little coaster lineup here, including Wakala, a Grosslauer family shuttle coaster, Huracan, an indoor zero family coaster, Dawson Duel, the only pair of side-by-side -side mountain coasters that I know of, and they even have the original Vacoma Boomerang coaster from 1984. But one of the reasons I wanted to visit was because Bella Guarda is home to what could be the last remaining topple tower out there. Personally, I thought it looked crazier than it rode, but I still enjoyed it for sure. I'm glad I was able to stop by this park on my 2022 Europe trip. Number 32, Tibi Dabo in Spain. The first park on this list from our most recent trip to Europe, Tibi Dabo's ranking was a hard decision for me to make. We were only able to spend about an hour here since we were tight on time, so we only rode the two roller coasters before heading out. But I understand that the park has many more attractions worth experiencing, including a year-round haunt, a 100-year-old plane ride, and you could even head inside this absolutely gorgeous cathedral. From what I did see, my favorite things about Tibi Dabo were the views looking out over Barcelona, as well as their standout roller coaster, Montaña Rusa. That was a super fun coaster. If I had the chance to to go back to this park in the future, I think it could go a few spots higher on my list. Number 31, Legendia in Poland, or as it's actually pronounced, Legendia Szlowski Weselem Mieszczesko. Leave a like for my awesome Polish. Anyways, this was the very first park I visited in Europe, and the park's standout ride, a light coaster, was the first roller coaster I experienced on the continent. I'd say the park holds a special place in my heart because of that, but it's really not great at all. The sole reason it rings this high is because a light coaster is one of the very best coasters in Europe. I loved it. It combines a world-class layout with every force you could want in a good roller coaster. But strange about Legendia is you do have areas like the Let Coaster Plaza, which is just super nice and modern, but then other parts of the park that look like they haven't been touched in decades. In that regard, I do consider this a very strange park, but Let Coaster is everything I hoped it would be and more, so I have to recommend you stop by. Number 30, Skyline Park in Germany. Speaking of weird parks, I don't think any on this list is more unorthodox than Skyline Park. I hadn't known any history of this place before visiting, so I didn't understand why it was set up the way it was set up. The park has zero atmosphere whatsoever with wide open pathways, giant plots of grass, and even a cornfield right in the center of it all. The ride lineup is also incredibly bizarre with several ultra rare roller coasters and actually some amazing flat rides. This is all because the park is owned by a former traveling showman and all makes sense now. My favorite attraction in the park was Skywheel which was my first time riding a Mauer Skyloop coaster. This one is particularly noteworthy for circling the layout twice so you get two times the duration and two times the forces of a normal one of these. In 2024 or 2025 Skyline Park will open the second tallest coaster in the country at 229.7 feet tall and we don't know who on earth is building it or how they have the money for something like that. That'll be a very interesting project to follow along with and it only cements this park status as one of the strangest in Europe. Number 29, Ferrari Land in Spain. This right here is the second gate to Porta Ventura in Salut, Spain. Yes, I am ranking them separately even though Ferrari Land is just a super small part of the entire resort. Ferrari Land is known for having Europe's tallest and fastest coaster, Red Force, which is an absolutely amazing ride. If you get lucky enough to ride this thing in the front row, you are in for one hell of a treat. Unfortunately, Red Force is all the park is known for and there isn't really any other reason to visit. But I'll give them credit where credit is due, the park visually looks great and has some really nice Italian inspired architecture because that's where Ferrari comes from. The biggest downside with this park is it has some abysmal park policies and staff that you can tell just don't really want to be there. But I plan on going more in depth when we talk about the main Porta Ventura park in part 2 of this video. Number 28, Wallaby Rhone Alps in France. A park that I've moved up quite a few spots from my old list, it's because Wallaby Rhone Alps really is a lot of fun for what it is. Even though the other two Wallaby parks steal the spotlight from this place, I think this park is equally as nice in terms of presentation, and though this one is geared more towards families, they are still home to a great one-two punch. Mystic is one of my favorite Gerslower Infinity coasters I've ridden. It's not that big and not too long, but it has an awesome layout with so many different forces. Timber is a Gravity Group family wooden coaster, and probably my favorite of the model I've done so far. And their coaster lineup will only get better with the addition of Mahuka next year, which is only going to be the second intimate hot racer built around the world. Overall, I thought this was a really charming park that is too often overlooked by coaster enthusiasts. Number 27, Holiday Park in Germany. For the longest time, I had heard that the only reason this park is worth visiting is for Expedition G-Force. Yes, the ride is amazing, it's probably my second favorite coaster in the entire country of Germany, but the park itself is a lot nicer than I expected too. It's really well shaded with lots of trees and it's got some good theming as well. And though its ride lineup aside from Expedition G-Force might not be the strongest, there are two other fun coasters and a couple good flat rides to enjoy. Admittedly, areas like food and operations are pretty lackluster though. I actually had the chance to visit Holiday Park on two separate occasions on my first trip, and the first time it was just to get an Expedition 
Egyptian G-Force in case I didn't have the chance to come back. But I did, so I got to experience that incredible attraction several more times and took the park in at a more leisurely pace. And I think it was that second visit where I found that this park was quite a bit better than coaster enthusiasts give it credit for. Number 26, Tivoli Gardens in Denmark. I know, I know, put your pitchforks down and let me explain. Hopefully it doesn't come as too much of a surprise that I think Tivoli Gardens is very overrated. It does look nice, for sure, but in every other aspect I was disappointed. I found the ride lineup to be one of the weakest in Europe, Ruchipanen being the standout coaster that it was, was a lot of fun, but not quite as good as a lot of people make it out to be. Demonen was also pretty mediocre for a BNM floorless coaster, though I will say it's impressive that they were able to fit that in at all. Aside from those two, there is nothing that really excites me ride-wise. Even their flat ride Tic Tac I thought was pretty underwhelming compared to similar rides at other parks and fun fairs. It doesn't help that this park is super expensive with it being right in the heart of Copenhagen, not just in terms of admission and rides, but food too. I paid like 30 bucks for a small portion of this. To be honest, I'm not 100% sure what it was. I did think it was really good, but that is still a ripoff. Tivoli has a fun atmosphere, and I'll say it again, it looks really nice, but I think there's much better options in Denmark and even just Copenhagen itself. Number 25, Parque de Atracciones de Madrid. This is my lowest ranked major amusement park from my second Europe trip, but that's not a knock on this place. If anything, it speaks to the quality of all the parks we visited because I still had a great time here. Parque de Atracciones is located near the city center of Madrid, so it's very easy to access and easy to spend a couple hours at. We had planned more or less a full day here, but ended up leaving early because we were so satisfied with our time spent at the park. They're home to seven roller coasters, which is the most of any park on the list so far, and they have a nicely balanced collection. Abysmo is the only extended Mauer Skyloop coaster, which was a lot of fun. And Tornado is an old school Intamin inverted coaster. They've got a couple really nice family coasters and kids coasters as well, so there really is something for everyone in that area. The biggest downside is like other parks operated by Parks Reunidos, operations are generally slow and food is just okay. But still, this is a nice park overall. Number 24, Babianlan in Belgium. Another Parks Reunidos park, and one that I'd compare to Park attractions in terms of quality, Bobby Online actually did exceed expectations. Its atmosphere and operations are quite similar, but I think the ride lineup here is better, particularly because they have Fury, which is an epic standout coaster for this park. It's easily one of my favorite Gerslauer Infinity coasters because it's got a great layout, great forces, and you can vote whether or not you want to ride forwards or backwards, which is super cool. The park also has a lot of quirky rides that you don't see every day. There's an indoor roller coaster called Revolution that has the longest coaster train ever, and in general was just super weird. There's a King Kong flat ride that shakes red in the air, but that one was unfortunately close for me. And they also have an indoor log flume with some nice surprises, and the park is currently renovating that for 2024. I definitely found that Bobby Online was nice looking in the front half, but was in need of some updates in the back half. But it didn't bother me so much since I didn't spend a whole lot of time back there anyways. If you're taking a theme park trip through the Benelux, you should absolutely make a stop at Bobby Online. Number 23, Tusenfried in Norway. The country signature amusement park is one with some high highs and some low lows. To start, Tusenfried is an absolutely beautiful park built into the terrain, so scenery is definitely one of its strong suits. It's also got a pretty bright and happy atmosphere, which I really enjoyed. You'll find eight roller coasters here, which is quite a lot, but none of them are really that amazing. The top three consisting of Storm the Dragon Legend, their new Gerslauer Invert, Speed Monster, their Tame Intimate Accelerator, and Thunder Coaster, their Vacoma Wooden Coaster, is an enjoyable top three for sure, but each of these rides were flawed in their own way, and I think the park could really use one world-class coaster investment. The non-coaster ride lineup makes up for this quite a bit, however. We did this Rapids ride, which was probably one of the better ones I've done in Europe, and a Dark Ride, which they built by blasting a hole into the hill side. Where this park really falls flat though is in the operations department. And once again, it is a Parks Reunidos park and those can be very hit or miss. But Tusenfried had some super slow dispatches, which is a shame because it actually gets pretty good attendance. The guest experience here could definitely use some improvement, but the park is otherwise very pretty with good rides and a nice atmosphere. Number 22, Movie Park Germany. I hadn't heard much about this place before visiting, so I really went in with an open mind and walked away impressed in many areas. But it's still far from perfect and we're going to talk about that too. Movie Park has a terrific supporting collection of both roller coasters and water rides. I loved Movie Park Studios and Van Helsing's Factory, both of which were creative indoor roller coasters. Star Trek Operation Enterprise was quite good too, but I think I was a bit let down by the forces on that one. They've also got Excalibur, which is easily one of Europe's best rapids rides, and Area 51, which is just beyond words with the theming in there. I feel that with Movie Park Germany more so than any other park I've visited in Europe, it's severely lacking in one truly outstanding coaster. I think they intended for Star Trek to be that, but it's probably my third or fourth favorite ride in the park. An easy way to fix this problem is by RMCing the park's wooden coaster Bandit, which they can market as the first RMC in Germany. And this leads into my problems with the park, first being that they have some terrible rides. I mentioned Bandit, which is an absolute piece of junk, but they've also got a Vacoma SLC, which isn't great either. And the whole area they're located in just looks very mediocre, honestly. Everything on the left side of the park past Star Trek, they could take out and it would honestly improve the park. 
On the bright side, operations weren't too shabby at this park, which is a change of pace for a Parks Reunitas park. And yes, it is just a coincidence that there are four of their parks in a row. I did not do that on purpose. But anyways, Movie Park Germany is definitely a fun time. Number 21, Kolmården in Sweden. I went back and forth whether or not I wanted to include this one because Kolmården isn't actually a theme park, it's a zoo. But honestly, it doesn't feel that different from a place like Bella Warde, which blends rides and animals. There's two ride designated sections of the park, one in the front half and one in the back half. The back section is gonna have your two most notable rides, Wildfire and the Safari Skyride. I cannot believe a place like this built the tallest wooden roller coaster in the world. And Wildfire doesn't just look amazing, it is amazing. There is no doubt for me anyways that it's the best roller coaster anywhere in Sweden. And that their Skyride is like 15 minutes long over these wide open animal enclosures, it is absolutely wonderful. Even putting these two attractions aside though, Kolmarden is a remarkable zoo with such a diverse collection of animals and some very friendly and informative staff. I've decided to put Kolmarden above so many traditional theme parks because I had a really fun time here. And number 20, Bakken in Denmark. Wrapping up part one of breaking every theme park I visited in Europe, we have Bakken. This is a park that really surprised me in many different ways. For one, the park has this carnival feel to it, but in a good way because they have some crazy rides. For only having five roller coasters, there are some unique ones, including my favorite coaster in Denmark, Tornado. This ride is already pretty crazy on its own, but sometimes if you ask, the ride operators will enable something called boost mode, which makes this one of the most intense coasters in the world. I had some great experiences on that ride and with the ride-ups that were absolutely fantastic. Ruscha Banen is a wooden coaster from 19 1932 with this. And maybe the biggest surprise, Mine Train Olven and Intamin Family Coaster had exceptional pacing in an awesome setting. I got to check out some really cool flat rides here too, again going back to that carnival atmosphere. Even the music and staff reflected one of the ones you'd see in Europe, it's a lot of fun. I think this is a cheaper and superior alternative to Tivoli Gardens, especially if you were contemplating visiting only one or the other. I had a great time at Bakken and would gladly return. But that my friends is going to do it for part one of ranking every theme park I've visited in Europe. Stay tuned for part two featuring spots in 19 through 1 because there is a lot of great great parks we'll be talking about. Many of the locations we talked about in this video were very fun, but part two is where the list really begins. Be sure to let me know in the comments which of the parks I've talked about so far stand out to you and which is your favorite if you've been to them. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving it a like and subscribing to Coaster Dash for more content like this in the future. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye guys!